so in this case what is important is how to implement this new education policy in colleges and whether all colleges will be eligible because now several state they are facing problem especially in kerala they have appointed a committee so which colleges should be eligible for implementing national education policy and they have mentioned that colleges which are accredited and which are having a grade these colleges will be eligible for implementing national education policy but if you consider there will be several difficulties because very few colleges will be eligible under this clause and it will be difficult to implement this national education policy in all colleges so therefore there must be some way out at least they should have some rules and regulation that the colleges which are accredited by nac and may be having some cgpa 2.5 and above if they are eligible then at least sizable number of colleges will be there for implementing this national education policy so i will just give you the information regarding the number of institution number of colleges number of universities and their status of accreditation how many colleges which are having autonomy because in new education policy we will have multidisciplinary autonomous institutions having degree awarding status so there it is mentioned autonomous so for autonomous also we will have to see because currently for getting autonomy minimum a grade is required but we will see what should happen another one second thing is establishment of nba because in this case also nac and nba they are established for improving the quality of higher education in professional colleges in and all colleges also and ugc has made it nac mandatory and it was there see, because ugc was sending see letters to colleges and universities also since 2013 that the colleges they should get accredited universities also should get accredited because this accreditation it is mandatory for universities also it is not only for colleges and there is restriction about the number of students also number of students in universities and colleges multidisciplinary it there should be minimum 3000 students whether it is a college multidisciplinary or a multidisciplinary university then introduction of paramar scheme by ugc because to improve the number of accredited colleges this scheme was introduced then nac has planned again to have a provisional accreditation for colleges i don't know what was there in their mind whether these colleges also would be eligible for implementing this new education policy but now they have stopped this scheme and may be suspended for some time i don't know what will happen but revised guidelines of nag i will just talk because now college people whether they are accredited or nag accredited if they are accredited and going for second third fourth cycle they have some fear in mind what will happen to their grade whether their grade will go down because there are evidences that the grades have gone down for several colleges also and this implementation of nep will serve if you consider again at national level and the number of institutions and increase in number of institution will realize that in 1857 only three universities were established in india and around 1950 there were 20 universities 500 colleges and the student taking higher education it was just 2 lakh 50000 so 2 and 1/2 lakh but now if you consider now say as per i say 1920 the number of universities has increased from 20 in 1950 to 1043 and it consists from central university state public university private cluster and deemed university cluster universities again form through cluster and our university say, at satara it is one of the cluster universities established by university we have deemed universities and if you look at the colleges also we have large number of colleges to see the current status say maybe on 2nd may 2022 if you look at because how many colleges and universities were eligible it the colleges and universities should have to 12 b status and if you consider this say out of 1043 only 392 universities are under this category state public universities 265 so these are the numbers here which are eligible But if you look at it, because what will be the problems faced by universities and colleges 
to implement these national education policies we have as i have told you that we have affiliating university 307 but stand alone institutions more than 11000 these will face problem because these are mainly these are again unitary or having only single faculty divisions and other one if you look at the number of colleges in various states at national level in eight states we have good number of colleges but rest of the state the number is very small and the states are having say uttar pradesh maharashtra karnataka rajasthan haryana tamil nadu gujarat and madhya pradesh other difficulty is about 40% of our universities which are located in rural areas and they are having their own problem about 61% colleges are located in rural area so out of 40 2343 colleges about 26000 colleges are in rural area another problem is about 79% colleges are managed by private management institution and out of them 65% are unaided and only 40% 14% are grant in aid colleges so therefore that 65% which are fully unaided they are having their own problem to creating infrastructure to appointing teachers and other one also Th- these institutions will face problem about 33% colleges they run single program and now we want to have multidisciplinary large number of programs minimum 5 6 programs in different things also so these colleges 33% is again a sizable number 16 to 17% colleges are having less than 100 students so these problems also will be there but currently say as per ise 1920 only 4% colleges are having more than 3000 students so they can directly go for multidisciplinary institutions having degree awarding status but that number is only 1700 gross enrollment ratio has been increased and it is 27.7 in 1920 but now government plan is to have 50 by 2035 and there are several problems also if you look at the number of foreign students also that also they are facing problem so as i have told you now nep mentioned that by 2025 no university should have more than 300 colleges but now there are 39 universities in india which are having more than 300 colleges and the other universities are having less than 300 colleges but they are uh, unitary universities sorry to disturb you sir uh, single pack yeah sorry to disturb you please uh, yeah. make up a slide show please no slide you are not able to see is it uh, we can see the slides but uh, uh-huh. view is not visible Yes. नहीं स्लाइड तुम्हारे दिस्ता है क्या नहीं स्लाइड दिस्ते अपन प्रेजेंटेशन सर फिर तो स्लाइड शो कराइए चाहे स्लाइड दिस्ते हैं हाँ हाँ नहीं स्लाइड दिस्ते पर मैं दिसत नहीं प्रेजेंटेशन करता ना नहीं नहीं तुम्हें दिस्ता है मैं सर इट्स ओके यू यू कंटिन्यू नहीं स्लाइड शो करा कंडी का इट्स ओके सर सर
सर प्लीज ओके ओके नो नो इट्स ओके बर ओके या so we have seen so universities also will face problem it is not only colleges will face problem but there will be these things also secondly as mishra madam has also mentioned and principal also mentioned that initiatives were taken by central government since the establishment of university grant commission because the first commission radha krishnan commission was appointed but as i have told you now the responsibility of university grants commission was to improve the quality of higher education also and provide funding also but now if you see ugc has reduced the funding and i have given the data for last five year in 1617 the ugc has provided funds for projects to teachers also and at institutional level and 1617 the amount spent by ugc was 107 crores in 1718 it was reduced to 23. Six in 1819, 1.5, 1920, 3.3, and now there is no provision for this. So, if there is no provision for research activities, then it will be difficult for colleges and universities to run research in their institutions. Also, this is just the information regarding various types of colleges because this national education policy includes all colleges, and now they say that there will be only two types of colleges. constituent colleges and conducted colleges these are run by the universities and others are affiliated colleges in affiliated colleges we have permanently affiliated and temporary affiliated colleges and in this type we have government colleges grant in aid colleges self finance professional non professional or like this and i have given you the information because for getting grant this nomination so which institutions are eligible that also because we require 12b status for universities and colleges and then for improving the standard of higher education assessment and ranking of institutions there are various institutions we have this say so national assessment and accreditation council was established in 1994 nba was also established in 1994 but the activities of nba started only in 2010 but this nak activity initiated from 1994 and actually the accreditation of college was started from 1997 98 now we have their mhrd national institutional ranking framework nrf it started in 2016 and they have recently declared the risk for 2022 other is atal ranking of institutions on innovation achievement and then we have international level Times Higher Educational Global Ranking and QS Global Ranking are now these things. So this NB also assesses the programs also. If you look at performance of this NAC also, which was say now the universities, as I have told you that there are 1,043 universities, but out of them, 379 and currently say 401 universities have been accredited. Out of these autonomous colleges, we have 871 and 122 are. Re-accredited by NAC colleges, forty-two thousand three forty-three, but eight thousand six hundred eleven. This data is on April two thousand twenty-two. So only these eight thousand or maybe nine thousand colleges have been accredited, but the number should increase, and then we will have it. If you see, as I have told you, that there are different methods and parameters for preparing SSR self-study report and NAC accreditation framework. So before 2017, there were different set of parameters, and under that category, universities about 58 percent universities were getting A grade, but in case of colleges, 21 percent colleges were getting A grade. But when the new guidelines were implemented in July 2017, it has gone down. That 58 percent of university has gone down to 32 percent, and for colleges. instead of 21 it has gone down to 12% but they again revised the based on the suggestions of peers and then say assessor then principals and professors from universities and colleges they had said suggestions to improve that whatever framework they have implemented in 2017 because there were several unrelevant matrices so they removed it and in december 2019 they had prepared the revised guidelines which were implemented from 
and in this revised guidelines there is improvement in getting a grade now universities instead of 32 now they are getting 53% universities are getting a grade autonomous colleges they started from 2017 separate accreditation so now it has improved from 28% to 59% and colleges from 12% to 22% which is more than the earlier one also so like that there are improvements so colleges should go ahead for submitting the proposal for first accreditation or for the subsequent cycles also and this is the data which is from 2020 if you look at the number of accredited colleges in this country now say on may say 24th may 22 say 230 223 colleges which are recently accredited the number is 401 and the total number now from the beginning till now as i have told you that colleges there i have mentioned but now recently it is 8648 and now there is good improvement in this case also state wise also if you look at it our maharashtra state because i have told you that this eight state they are having large number of colleges but in maharashtra out of 4494 colleges 18 120 colleges they have been accredited and the current figure is uh, 1840 so it is more than 40% but in other state that number is less than that similarly for universities also our maharashtra state we have 42% but in tamil nadu 73% universities have been accredited and autonomous colleges if you look at it see in eight state there are 871 autonomous colleges at national level but in maharashtra we have 137 and andhra pradesh 121 and other so like that we have good number paramar scheme was introduced by ugc to increase the number of colleges nac accredited colleges this was introduced in august 2019 and in september they had identified 167 higher education institutions which are having a plus grade as mentor they were mentoring to other colleges which have not submitted their proposal even for the first cycle and these they had identified 936 menti colleges and they were supposed to guide them and now they have guided them so that the number again will increase in nac accredited colleges provisional as i told you that provisional accreditation for colleges pact it was introduced in february 22 but it was reasonably very cheap because now for our regular accreditation the colleges are accredited out of 1000 but in this one there were only uh, 25 question 10 questions on quantitative and 15 questions on qualitative having two mark each so out of 50 and they were having only for passing say whether accredited or not accredited and other one then the ratio of this also was different for qualitative and quantitative revised guidelines of nac as i have told you that when they revise these guidelines also several irrelevant matrices they had removed it and now the current picture in this case is uh, say in july 2017 january 2020 and june 22 now recently they are implementing here so in case of colleges if you look at it say earlier this qualitative matrices were 35 which were changed 42 now 36 and recently from june 22 it is only 21 so now instead of 35 36 it is only 21 so college should submit their proposal it is for non accredited or even for accredited colleges similarly for quantitative matrix also instead of 79 it was made 58 and 60 after 2017 and now it is made only 34 so now if you look at it the total one 171 121 was before 2017 july to this july 2017 and now it is only 55 so it is easy now and college so there is no change in this weightages so criteria wise weightages also which was there earlier also then the major changes also we have seen here and in this case this is the comparative statement how it has gone down the other one so these are again what are the changes here if you look at it in criteria 1 what are the changes they have made so criteria 1 say 
it the weightage was 20 and for 20 now it, there is only one qualitative metric which is carrying 20 marks so like that if you look at it if you go through it very carefully so this is criteria one criteria two criteria three four five six and seven so these are the pictures so now everywhere you will find that the number of matrices have been reduced qualitative and quantitative and now it is reasonably easy for the colleges to have. What are the major changes I have just summarized here? So previously, qualitative quantitative ratio was 30 to 70. Uh, that you are aware of it because 70% quantitative. But now under these new guidelines, it has changed about 40% qualitative and 60% quantitative. So 10% they have changed. Then qualitative is 379 mark and quantitative 621. So it roughly it comes to about 40, 60. Peer team visit, there is no change. Earlier, whatever was there, and now also it is there. Grading system, there is no change here. But the aim is to encourage colleges to come out forward, and we have large number of this also. The number of matrices we have seen, that it is changed, and this we have already seen. So look at the grading system. So initially, when the NAC, started accreditation in 1999 and 2000. So from that time, initially there was star system, then A, B, C, then nine point scale and seven point scale. So that seven point scale is still there now. But the point in this case is, say grading A, A plus A double plus B, B plus B double plus also, but in this case that Peer team, say before this 2017, everything, all the marks were with the peer team. But now after this quantitative and other one, now quantitative, different system has been uh, used by NAC. Say quantitative, quantitative data is validated by some agency which is authorized by NAC. So that agency uh, validates the data and on the basis of data, they give the marking student satisfaction survey, again, based on the responses from the student, the grade is given and only 30% was there. And now in new guidelines, it is 40%. So that 30 to 40% is only with this NAC peer team. And for this qualitative data, as we have seen earlier, say before June 2022, there were 35 questions and now there are 21 questions. So only 21 and that earlier 35 question, NAC peer team, when they used to visit colleges, for these matrices, they were giving one, two, three, four, or zero based on the performance of the college. And they used to send the report to NAC. And all the three reports, just NAC computer section was combining it. And there was no modification. Whatever CGPA comes after that calculation, that was declared by NAC as the CGPA and the grade. And in this case, what was happening is there were some colleges which are having, say, 2.98 or 2.99, and few colleges, they have got 3.00, but the grade is B double plus. But in earlier, when the peer team was assessing the whole out of 1,000, when such situation was there, some colleges was getting, say, 2.98 or 98, 99, the peer team was considered, they were looking into the quality, they were considering the facilities available in the colleges also, and they were trying to improve it. They were not retaining at 2.99, but they were trying to improve it to 3.01 so that the colleges, they were getting A grade. But now it stops at that stage. And when you consider that uh, A, A plus and A double plus, so A is 3.01 to 3.25. So if some college, college get 3.24 or even 3.25, it remains as A unless it becomes 3.26. And now there are again several problems. You can make an appeal, but there are no changes after that also. National education policy. Because why I have spent more time here in the accreditation? Because I have told you that NAC accreditation, they may make it mandatory for considering the colleges for multidisciplinary institution. And our principal, Dr. Ganesh Thakur, has already mentioned here how that new education policy had come into picture and how the committees were appointed and all of this. So, so opportunities through new education policy, if you look at this, 
to develop the intellectual aesthetic social physical emotional ethical and moral facets of an individual especially that is for holistic development of the student at college level also all our teachers and all the members they take all round make all effort to make all round development of the students also and this is again expected in national education policy enhance focus on flexible education research and development innovation and incubation this is all right theoretically because in science we have see theory and practicals also once you write something but practically we have to prove it so research and development as i have told you that research and development you can have really good achievement if you have proper infrastructural facilities and good research funding then only we can have research especially in science faculties but for others also we need some support for creating a research atmosphere in colleges or encouraging our teachers also for providing this one or taking interest in this innovation incubation also unless you have fund you cannot develop your ideas because incubation we can guide students also or if they have some ideas which we can implement at making them professional type or have some industrial development and other one also for that also it required because initially the funding was provided by ugc and the colleges under our plans up to 12 plan colleges were getting say development grant and under merge schemes also each scheme was having about 7 lakhs of rupees and there were 50 15 different types of scheme so all colleges which were having that 12 b status they were getting good num uh, good amount of grant from ugc and even from other funding agencies like csir dbt dst or dia and other one also it was possible and even from universities also some universities providing but unless you have this it is difficult enhancing the performance of higher education institutions in teaching learning and research to a greater height that is okay just for mentioning but teaching learning it depends upon the number of teacher whether the teachers positions are filled if the college is grant in aid running both grant in aid and non grant basis courses also but grant in aid we have seen that more than 50% seats are vacant and these are just plans that government always says that okay you plan it now our maharashtra government has also last year mentioned that some post will be filled in colleges also and now they have mentioned that they have to have that roster system approved by them but still they had planned to fill the post in 22 23 so actually they should have filled all the post also but there are it is just in initial stage then transforming existing higher education institutes into degree awarding we will see that what are the problems here but if you look at the gist and salient features of national education policy the theme is that undergraduate program will be up 3 and 4 years now so 4 years with multiple entry multiple exit so multiple entry and multiple exit it was earlier also but it was not named as multiple entry multiple exit because the student after completing one year if student were getting some job they were leaving their education or if they are failed and what was happening is then it was affecting the student because the student if they were leaving that so it was affecting our nag grade also but now also officially they can have but this multiple entry multiple exit so how many years the student should complete their graduation that should be there because otherwise we will have to keep all the data for the students also when they leave the say institution after one year or second year and like that for after come they have mentioned that it is really good that after completing one year they will get certificate after completing two year diploma three year bachelor degree completing four year bachelor degree with research but if you look at it they have now given the clear understanding because when the student will get a certificate after completing one year because for each year there will be 40 credits say 40 40 40 out of in four years that 160 but if the student want to leave say exit after one year it is mentioned here that after one year he will get certificate but now in recent guidelines it is mentioned that the student has to undergo again 10 credit is of say project work and something then only he will be eligible for getting certificate similarly after second year getting diploma these are the thing the student will have major and minor options also in choice based credit system so they can choose here also the problem will be now 
we they have mentioned that there is no compartmentalization the student can select if the student from science side can select some credit from art faculty commerce faculty or even any other faculty also or from linguistic and other one so in this case also we will have to keep a track of this and there is a provision of academic bank of credit in academic bank of credit also the institution so whether all institutions again will be eligible that is again another question and as we have seen say tamil nadu and this kerala government they have some different guidelines so in this case now ugc has said that all colleges and universities they should register for this academic bank of credit and once they are registered the student from this institution the institute it is the responsibility of the institution to make student aware about the academic bank of credit so that the students also can register with this then only they their grades or that credits will be uh, mentioned in that or they will have that the duration of pg program it is based on this so whether it is 3 year or 4 year if it is 4 year then pg program will be 1 year if it is 3 year then 2 year depending upon this also then it is mentioned that the student they can join research degree after completion of 4 year but now they have specified all students will not be eligible for joining research but the student who get minimum 7.5 out of 10 then only they will be eligible for joining degree the other student they have to join their pg and then only they will become eligible for the other one credit system will be implemented from undergraduate level and mphil degree will be abolished and that will be removed more focus on student practical and application oriented knowledge also this is all right because what was happening is every time there were comments from various courses also our student after completing their graduation and post graduation they are not employable even for engineering colleges also they were mentioning that they are not having uh, say complete understanding of the subject especially the practical knowledge and they were mentioning the civil engineer they are not aware of so how many bricks are required for completing one brass work and other and so like that so therefore practical knowledge is necessary in all facts of life so whether it is say science subject or if it is in commerce in commerce also there are practical knowledge it is necessary for this it is mentioned that two year bed course will be discontinued and a separate four year degree course will be continued will be introduced and by 2030 Minimum qualification for teachers in school will be a four-year B.A. degree. This is for B.A. But for colleges, physical education. So now they have recently introduced the Bachelor of Sports Management. This is a three-year degree course. On one side we are having four-year degree course, but the Bachelor of Sports Management recently in 2000 uh, in April 22 they have declared this and. Uh, again sports man bachelor and masters also sports management bachelor of sports science these are again three year degree course and the other one we will continue with you right then another features of this one is by 2035 all colleges after accreditation all colleges after accreditation will become multidisciplinary institutions having autonomy and degree awarding status so now we have to plan the state our state government has say uh, constituted two different committees one for implementation one for preparing the syllabus curriculum for four year degree course and other one also but this is again in preliminary stage then cluster of higher education institution to get multidisciplinary institution that also i have told you that there are large number of colleges which are having less than 100 student or single faculty colleges so this will be the real difficulties for the affiliating system will be abolished and graded autonomy will be provided to colleges through transparent system they have mentioned here graded autonomy because now current currently i have told you that getting autonomy it is minimum a grade 3.01 but in graded i don't know they may bring down to 2.5 or 2.51 so that it will be b plus grade so that most of the colleges they will become so by 2025 no university will have more than 300 affiliated colleges this is all right but whether there are any plans of any government at all india level that no colleges if they have, and because i have mentioned that 40 colleges they are having more than 300 colleges 40 universities so there 
the state should take some measure that this college, university should be bifurcated or trifurcated depending upon the number of colleges because there are several universities which are having more than 1000 colleges especially in north and we have here so this one and by 2040 all higher education will institution will become multidisciplinary institution Salient feature, because what about curriculum? Because we have mentioned that unless the curriculum, first thing is that degree, four-year degree, it should come in UGC section 22, three, in that 22, because unless the degree is there, then it is not possible for any university or the institution, autonomous colleges to implement that degree. And regarding curriculum, we have to frame the curriculum. Now in the recent guidelines of NAC, UGC, they have mentioned, for that four-year degree course, the first three semesters will be common. So we have to frame syllabus for the first three semesters and whether there will be any specialization. If there is specialization, how many semesters should be there for that specialized course and how many other subjects should be there for the other course also. That also should be specified. And as we have seen that they have given more focus on critical thinking, discovery, discussion, and teaching-based analysis and holistic development means all-round development students should be aware of and focus on e-learning to reduce the dependence on textbook because once you have e-learning we can get the ready-made material from internet so that even if the textbooks are not available once you subscribe some syllabus and give this this we can have another thing it is mentioned that to increase the budget six percent of dgc and, but currently, now it is 1.7%. But if you look at our budget, 22, 23, there is no provision. Again, it is less than 2%. So like that, on one side, something is said, but it is not properly implemented. The aim to achieve 100% youth and adult literacy, that also it is one of the Types of higher educational institutions here, it is mentioned that there will be two types of universities teaching intensive university and research intensive university. But there they should frame because how to classify these universities, which university should be considered as teaching university and research university. So in this is also guideline because we have 1043 universities in India. Their constituent college, what will happen? Then degree awarding multidisciplinary autonomous colleges having more than 3000 students that we have seen and the problems also we have separate institutional development because once you identify this there should be some plan because now they say that the institution colleges and even universities they should prepare their development plan and we prepare it as per our maharashtra public universities as also we prepare our five-year plan so separate institutional development plan so for these universities also once you classify it as research intensive university and teaching intensive there should be separate plan. If it is a research intensive university, they should focus only on faculty research, industry collaboration, research project, and research output, which is at national and even at international level, it should be very sound. Then only our institutions, which will be reflected in international level standard. It is necessary to have a roadmap for transforming all these institutions because no guidelines, guidelines are not clear for colleges also and how to have it. As I told you that insufficient provision in budget for proper implementation of NEP, teaching, training and adult education, this was was budget head in our budget. In 21-22, the provision was 250 crore, but in 22-23, it is reduced to 127. Similarly, for education budget, less provision is made as compared to the earlier years also. NEP mentioned that 6% GDP, but in 22-23 budget, it is again less than 2%. So therefore, planning is one thing and actual implementation, it is difficult and it is different than the other one. So unless provision is made, it will be difficult for colleges and universities, whether the colleges are multidisciplinary or other ones still. So push in digital education, but provision for PM Vidya scheme in 21-22, it was 648-46 crore, but in 22-23, it is just 421. Similarly, learning loss in last two years, we have seen that because of pandemic, there is loss in teaching, learning evaluation system, colleges face problem, universities face problem, 
but there is no provision made in budget so that there will be improvement possible for colleges and universities also so no provision our principal mentioned that meru one meru should be established in each district that was their plan or a model college and now in india we have 748 district so if they plan to establish meru maybe 50 meru each year still it will take 15 year but there is no planning in budget and other one also but only thing is they are trying to implement uh, nep 2020 only introduction of new four year degree course or introduction of these value added programs and other one also and like that so therefore for proper implementation provision should be made for this also there is sufficient provision for central universities and institutes of national importance in our country so i will give some evidences for this implementation of any p2020 from academic year 22 it is planned so therefore now academic year 2023 we have started or now we will start but in this case unless we have a provision because for implementation of four year degree course at least the syllabus should be ready and proper planning should be ready then only we can implement this nep at least that four year degree course so whether all institution the same question whether it will be eligible and as a, how to identify eligible colleges that again we have to make it clear whether all colleges will be eligible because now formation of cluster and this one it will be difficult because unless you plan it nicely and you have proper planning for this one whether nac accreditation and autonomy will be the criteria for identifying this and currently i have told you that out of 42343 colleges say maybe 8000 or 900 college 9000 colleges are only accredited only 900 colleges are autonomous so these problems will be crucial and we will have to have academic bank of credit it is mentioned it looks very nice and it is attractive for students also but what will be the uh, implementation procedure because colleges we have to see they have made again that abp platform ready so that abp platform it is by national e governance division negd of the ministry of electronics and information technology under the dg locker framework will be available now they have made it available universities and colleges they are trying to register with them but still there are some problem very few universities and colleges they have registered for this abp platform and now large number of colleges and universities they have to register because unless they register and it is made known to the student it will be difficult for this also students have to open their academic account to get on board and eligibility for this and what will happen is because unless the college and the university comes under this unless they register it the student cannot transform their credit from one institution to another institution or one university to another university so therefore this will depend upon how large number of universities and colleges they register for this and they will have so abc will be digitally stored and uh, so in this case also for how many years it will be stored whether the student has to complete their graduation in 8 years or 10 years otherwise it will be difficult for college and university to retain they register and all information with them another thing is creation of multidisciplinary higher education institution in this case to convert single stream colleges and universities into multidisciplinary autonomous degree awarding colleges and universities having 3000 students because that single faculty universities there are large number of single faculty universities so they have to have to introduce new subjects and then for universities it is possible for colleges if some colleges they want to come under multidisciplinary unless it is say autonomous college it is not easy for other colleges to introduce new courses because the colleges they have to submit proposal to university for introducing new course it has to be passed by academic council of the university and then only they can introduce new courses so they have to pass all these hurdles in formation of cluster also there will be different challenges i will explain to that then strengthening infrastructural facilities for education and research activities again how to strengthen these facilities 
uh, what will be the requirement of funds also and how to generate the fund and the, the challenges i will talk on this cluster formation challenges in consolidation this is what i want and these problems i have mentioned to you that single faculty and colleges so now even if you plan merger merger of two institutions two colleges <coughs> and now what we have is colleges i have told you that about 70 per, 78% colleges are run by private management so in this case the management say merger of institution under the same management for example our red in red system there is no problem because we can have two three colleges we can form a cluster and we can say include two three colleges depending upon whether the colleges they are accredited or they are eligible for accreditation and we'll have but what will happen is a managing trust because if it is from the the managing trust in this case in the same management what is the procedure the managing trust or the society has to submit the proposal as per the rules of state government and affiliating university so here the rules should be framed by state government and affiliating university how to accept the proposal and how to have because in this case it is mentioned that this affiliating system will be abolished by 2035 so till that time the whole system will continue because here these institutions they will have to submit proposal for formation of multidisciplinary institution to the university so university will consider their proposal and till that time all the colleges again will be still affiliated with the university under multidisciplinary institutions also the certificate will be awarded by university still the university disaffiliate them so maybe by 2035 all multidisciplinary institutions will be disaffiliated from university and then only they will be eligible for awarding their degree or if some colleges as i mentioned to you that about 1700 colleges they are having more than 3000 students and they are multidisciplinary they can directly submit the proposal but now government has to frame the rules and regulations and affiliating university should act on this but if it is merger of institutions run by different management there will be different for example in one city there are large number of colleges but which are run by different institutions so if one management is having only one college another management is having <coughs> two three colleges and if the colleges they want to form a cluster say college one management having one college another management having two colleges third management having three colleges so these three management if they want to form a cluster then there will be issues for example one management which is running one college and the college is nac accredited and having say maybe a grade a plus grade like that and the other colleges they are not accredited or uh, they are not eligible even for accreditation if they are having low standard why the other management they will accept that college so there will be several problems so therefore we will have but what will be the procedure for them is again they will have to come under one umbrella private institution desirous of merging with the institutions of another registered society or trust may apply with the approval of the university to the society trust first and the society will form again a combined trust and then only they can submit a proposal for multidisciplinary institution there is another provision <coughs> national higher education qualification framework for proper implementation of nep because there is a need to develop nationally accepted and internationally compatible acceptable qualification framework for higher education because it should because our institution multidisciplinary they should have some good standard acceptable standard then only their degrees will be accepted at international level also so in this case ugc has mentioned that they are not interested in curriculum development they have given freedom to uh, states and universities also to frame their curriculum and other one all higher education institution need to provide quality education this is all right as i mentioned but this one i have made introduction in bip introduction of four year ug program with multiple entry and multiple exit 40 credit at each year 
120 for three year and 160 for four year degree course. Certificate after completion of 40 credits, I have mentioned it is not only 40 credits, but student has to complete some project work, then only you will be eligible. Research and others. So here we have to see that research intensive teaching intensity also should have more than 3000 students that also they will have to face problem. There will be only one type of university is mentioned and no more deemed private and open and unitary universities also. Standalone institutions we have mentioned that more than 11,000 we have here. These also will have to convert into this and the standalone universities also have to implement and other one also. Institutional architecture, so how it will have after implementation of any, just the summary. All higher education institutions will be transferred into large number of multidisciplinary universities and colleges or higher education clusters or knowledge hub. Having more than this also, we have discussed again, 4%. University, what will be the definition of university? University will mean a multidisciplinary institution of higher learning that offers UG and PG programs with high quality teaching research and community engagement means our multidisciplinary institutions as we are planning they will be considered as university so the definition of university will allow the spectrum of institution which range from research intensive university teaching intensive university and autonomous degree awarding colleges having multidisciplinary status this one but what will be the precautions the multidisciplinary institutions they will have to have general guidelines they have framed for this the standard prescribed by ugc or other statutory regulatory bodies such as medical council of india dental council of india bar council of india then nursing national council of teacher education then indian nursing council and all because they will have to follow because while merging them and you will have to have you will have to take guidelines from this one Nomenclature of the degree, as we have discussed, it should come in section 22.3 of UGC. Capacity building and faculty, because once you form this, you can have capacity building, training workshops, and other one for motivating teachers. But requirement of human resources must be fulfilled. That we have mentioned that how we will have. And then annual refresher training and other, because this will be after consolidation into a multidisciplinary institution that we will have. Second thing is, they have to satisfy the requirement of statutory bodies, as we have mentioned, that this is in relation to the infrastructural facilities and the programs have to be offered in collaboration with other institutions, because in this case, we can have clusters of these institutions. As for the norms of UGC and other statutory bodies, adequate number of qualified faculty should be there, because if it is under AICT type, you will have to have that ratio, 15 is to 1 or 20 is to 1 or 12 is to 1 and other one. And then, so therefore, merging one professional institution with other non-professional also, they will have to frame some proper norms also, selection at the cluster level, at that management level also, they will have to have adequate mechanism to be in place for counseling services and other facilities such as placement assistant, career guidance, and other one. As I told you that once you form that multidisciplinary institution, again, say from two, three different management, they, that system, placement system should be at one place, career guidance. So that responsibility should be given to different institutions and they will have to have some guidelines. General conditions for multidisciplinary institutions again. So all the facilities, because what UGC expect is Availability of ad adequate educational infrastructure, such as audio-visual facility, e-learning resources, virtual classrooms, and studios should be there in that cluster or multidisciplinary institution. High bandwidth internet connectivity to support online distance, because they are eligible to run online and distance education also, or online courses. But this provision should be there. And provision for electronic access of journal books and other ones. So on one side, this is all right. But another thing is, who will provide the fund for multidisciplinary also? Academic collaboration. Other is, say, for classes. They mentioned that you can have uh, introduction of integrated courses. So <laughs> we can have collaboration. For example, one college running a BA program and another college is running a BA program then we can form an integrated course and there will be opportunity for this cluster also to have 
इंटीग्रेटेड बी ए बी एड प्रोग्राम बी एस सी बी एड प्रोग्राम और बी एस सी एम बी ए प्रोग्राम बी एम बी ए प्रोग्राम लाइक दिस सो डेट दिस आर द अपॉर्चुनिटीज आफ्टर फॉर्मेशन बट बिफोर डेट वी विल हैव टू फुलफिल ऑल द नाउ approval process and degree awarding under the purview of affiliating university that i have mentioned because they have to submit the proposal to university and university will provide approval proposal must be submitted jointly by both institution because if you are forming a cluster of two institution three institution you will have to have that and program need to be approved by academic council of the university you have to look at this because even if you are multidisciplinary institution whatever program you from the your program should be approved by the university so still even if we are mentioning that not affiliated affiliation that will be after 2035 but till that time you will have to form all these things also and to have uh, the development or the plans or proper implementation of these courses programs in multidisciplinary institution there must be a facility or provision for memorandum of association or memorandum of understanding between different institute different institutions run by different managements and other one will have when you form <coughs> cluster cluster of colleges cluster of colleges run by the same management i have told you that there is no problem cluster and multidisciplinary single faculty that we will have to have possibility of making courses more dynamic at that we have in, in discussed here colleges must run a charitable trust because who will come these are the guidelines for this one also and we will have here characteristics of cluster as we have seen for multidisciplinary institution characteristics of cluster of colleges also one parent institution and other partnering colleges also student can study partly in one college and partly in another college also because they will have common program and we will say that abc type in this one we can have it then clustering colleges will continue to be affiliated to the university this again because this is you will have to keep it in mind admissions examination results and degree will be awarded by the university so this again we will have to consider all these things also financial resource have to be managed by the cluster college you see here cleverly other things are run by university and other but financial resources it is the responsibility of the management and the colleges which are forming the cluster to generate fund generating funds now from society or philanthropy now it is not so easy but still because now what happens is from industry also we can get some funds and you will have to have collaboration because in formation of that cluster what will happen is when colleges which is not up to the mark but other colleges having good infrastructural facilities they can share so it will be beneficial for the other colleges rather than the other cluster <coughs> through cluster introduction we have still that programs we can have skill development program internship because for single faculty college it will be difficult but unless you unless once you form the cluster then under that cluster all colleges will be eligible to introduce you know, skill development courses or you can form internship programs or collaborations with other institution reputed institution existing colleges will continue to function under prevailing norm also no change in recruitment appointment because here also as we have seen that we will have to follow the guideline for smooth functioning of cluster of colleges we'll have a different board board of directors for government and private there will be different thing they have mentioned they have given the guidelines how to form this one also there characteristics of these the norms and standards we have seen that apex body this is just the summary because we will have to keep all this one proposals are to be submitted this also we have made it so like that we will have to keep all these things in mind and in submitting with appropriate accreditation <coughs> multidisciplinary autonomous degree awarding institution can further evolve into a research but first thing is appropriate accreditation that word i am again using it making you cautious that accreditation is important the institution shall have to enter into mou between interacting institutions and other one i am timetable have to prepare because in this case we have seen the student has the liberty for completing one course from one college another college so that timetable you will have to prepare it properly so that it will not be difficult for the student action plans have to be prepared for implementation also collaborative program 
have to be a part of the institutional development plan because how you want to collaborate what are the things because once you have this then we can have there is the possibility of student <clears throat> they can pursue two programs in cluster and multiplication institutions also two full time program in physical mode if the timing from one course and other course it have if it does not overlap with the other one that is another thing is one full time programs in physical mode and another in odl open distance or in online mode or both in odl and online mode you can have so this one see this is the recent one also odl and online degree or diploma shall be pursued only with such higher education institution which are recognized by ugc and statutory council and government of india because ugc has recently removed the permission of one university from south that they have not taken approval from ugc for running odl and online degree course so therefore the multidisciplinary institutions they have to take permission from ugc to run these courses also and guideline shall be effective from the day they are handed. online odl so here another thing, this we have made it that g gross enrollment ratio 2035 here it is need and other one but in this case also if you have student if you allow to have two degrees again the ratio will increase student can register for degree diploma and other one again that gross enrollment ratio will increase multidisciplinary institutions can introduce that online courses that we have seen but this after completing similarly large number of swam courses are available because now the colleges and universities they can run online program for our regular semester system also about 40% they can complete through online and the rest uh, offline courses also so as per swam regulation 2021 the student they can learn up to this they have made it clear <clears throat> multidisciplinary education and research institutions i have already talked to you that this will be at par with iits and iim also and this i have mentioned that in india we have 748 districts also but there is no provision no mechanism is made for this also national research foundation this is one important point in this new education policy it is establishment of national research foundation what is the aim and purpose is to catalyze and expand research and innovation across the country to initiate and develop the cluster culture of research in higher education institution means in colleges also and universities also and but creating this culture again funds are required so therefore let us see here how they are mentioned provide suitable incentives for outstanding research and recognition these are aim but let us see how it is reflected in proper funding to initiate and develop culture we have mentioned but funding <clears throat> to provide funds for research in all discipline you see guidelines it is all right successful research will be recognized through close linkages with government and non government agencies then duplication of fund will be awarded so why they want to establish national research foundation because there will be only one agency which will provide funds now csir was providing dst was providing dbc icss and another one. but now it will be located through national research foundation and another council will be for for providing fund for this <coughs> this year when this national research foundation was inaugurated by our honorable prime minister his quote is we must establish an expanded research <coughs> ecosystem friend our strength in research and development are built on the backbone of our national labs iits Uh, Indian Institute of Science, TIFR, ICER. However, 95% of our students they go to state universities. You follow? Because in India, three crore eighty-five lakh students are taking higher education. <clears throat> Out of them, 95 students are taking education in state universities and colleges, where the research is still limited. strong research ecosystem must be developed in these universities and colleges these are the words of our honorable prime minister and what he expect is i call upon the national research foundation science and technology and innovation advisory council to discuss these issues in detail formulate an action plan in consultation with the ministry of human research development now ministry of education 
and look into how our colleges and universities will be benefited. Because now, as I have mentioned, that 95 percent students are taking education in state universities and these colleges also, and only 5 percent students are taking education in these institutes of national importance. Institutes of national importance are only 137, and they are getting. 90% fund and only 10% funds are provided to state and colleges also so how research is expected in colleges <clears throat> reduction of funds i have told you that here in research projects i have mentioned it earlier that 107 but rusa if you look at because now ugc says that rusa will provide funds to colleges and other one also but the provision of fund in 1920 for rusa it was 1278 in 2021 it reduced to just 167 so 87% less so how rusa will provide funds to colleges and universities also number of emeritus fellowships also it is reduced in 1780s it was 559 in 2020 21 22 uh, 2021 it is just 14 similarly radhakrishnan post doctoral fellowship 1718 434 was there 2021 just 200 no mention of funds in national research foundation when it is mentioned that what how they will provide fund for other one also so friend unless all these things are materialized it will be difficult for universities and colleges to implement all these things in other way there will be single overarching umbrella this is planned in that nep and that is national say higher education commission of india HECI with the following four independent councils so general education council for setting standard higher education grants council again for funding national accreditation council for accreditation national higher education regulatory council for this but no steps have been taken for this one also because they, what they want to have is higher education commission of india they want to bring all say ugc iict medical council of india and other one in one umbrella but now it is not so easy because central government has to pass the bill in parliament then only it will materialize but i don't think they have taken any steps for this also national mission for mentoring they have mentioned so that we can have some possibility for this provision professional education i have mentioned that they will have to have all professional educations will be integral part of higher education system stand alone technical university such as health science technical law and other one they have to become multidisciplinary institution national education technology forum will be created to enhance learning assessment and planning of admissions also what will be the effect of nep on iits iits and other engineering institutions will have say net <clears throat> they will have to move towards holistic and multidisciplinary education with more arts and humanities courses they will have to introduce introduction of other courses will provide opportunities for students to select subject of their choice because then only that proper abc will be useful for the student and cbcs choice based credit system and then we have outcome based education this we are now all colleges are considering and universities also they are considering friend this is the last one so success of implementation of national education policy as i told you that <clears throat> it depends upon the steps to be taken at university level UG PG program skill development program then nac accreditation for affiliated colleges autonomous colleges choice based credit system steps to be taken for abc online education so unless the university provide guidelines for introduction of say four year pg program and the course and syllabus and so colleges it will be difficult for them state government what is expected is teaching post permission for new colleges and introduction you see on one side we have mentioned that colleges should be reduced and other one they are again giving permission ugc level regulation for four year ug program one year pg program directions to universities identification of university under teaching because they will have to provide some norm for identifying teaching and research intensive university ministry of education as i have told it that they will have to have for that higher education commission of india the information of all these things also so friend thank you but if, just i will summarize because here <clears throat> i have discussed all the things again but if you want to summarize what are the opportunities for different stakeholders 
for student i have discussed it already but here multiple entry multiple exit the facility is there student can choose subject under choice based credit system academic bank of credit facility is there there is no separation between vocational academic so they can select holistic approach for student so there will be all round development of the student emphasis is on creativity and critical thinking and these things also provided so like that this will be advantages and opportunities for the student what about institution the institutions will have multidisciplinary approaches also they will have to offer and they will get the opportunity to form autonomy or get autonomy from this also and once that meru is established they can collaborate with meru or that uh, institution which are having say global standard for this one also or the more model colleges at each district also teachers will have freedom to frame their syllabus and they can have their internal evaluation like autonomous colleges also so these are the opportunities for teachers and universities also it will be easy because after 2035 now several times it is mentioned that all affiliated universities are facing problem because their most of their energy is spent in conducting examination 